come in, come in. It's time again for your showtime. The hour for another story. The Adventure of the Speckled Band, this one's called. It's based on a story by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle about the most famous detective of all time, Sherlock Holmes. It's about one of Mr. Holmes' best cases, one of his very best. With one murder two years old, and another murder that's not yet happened. The beginning of this adventure wasn't at all unusual, at least not for Mr. Holmes, just to knock on the door of the bachelor quarters that he shared with Dr. Watson. A knock on the door by a stranger, of course. But then when the great detective escorted the veiled young stranger toward a chair, he felt her arm trembling even through the thickness of her coat. May I order you some tea? Uh, my dear Watson, pray build up the fire. Oh, it isn't cold that makes me shiver, Mr. Holmes. It's fear. And there was no one else you could turn to? Well, I, I know of what you did in the Farintosh case and... Yes, we almost ended up on the bottom of the Thames in that one. And I can't ask help of the two people I should. Your father and a young gentleman. Would you know of me? No, but you wear no wedding ring. And if your mother were alive, she would be with you. Yes, she died many years ago. Mr. Holmes, my fears are so vague and, and based upon so little. Both of them think I'm demented. Perhaps I am. From what I can observe, no more so than I, or good Dr. Watson here. Possibly even less than he. Huh? <laughs> your trouble, then, seems to date from the death of your mother. No, from the time she married my stepfather, Dr. Roylott. That was in India, Mr. Holmes. Since we returned from India, after my mother's death, he's become a man of violent tempers. A man who... Oh, a man with a passion for Indian animals. Cheetahs, monkeys. Weird birds. A man who neither lets us see people nor sees them himself. Doesn't all this interfere with his practice? He no longer practices. My mother left him over a thousand pounds a year. Part of which my sister and I were to get at such time as we married. Your sister and you? Why is your sister not here, Miss Stoner? She's dead, Mr. Holmes. Pray be precise as to details. That's easy. Quite easy. You see? Yes, it was easy for Helen Stoner, because every moment of that night was branded in her mind. The manor house she lived in had long ago seen its best days. Part of it was closed down because of the expense. And as a result, the three bedrooms they used were all in one wing. Her stepfather's. Then her sister's. and then her own. That particular night, Dr. Roylott had retired early, but her sister seemed strangely disturbed and stayed in Helen's room until late, talking about her coming marriage. Then, just as she was leaving, Tell me, Helen, lately have you heard a strange sound in the middle of the night? Why, no, Jean, why? Well, I have. It awakens me each time, a low, clear whistle. But I, I can't tell from where it comes. Probably those gypsies camping near here. Well, then why didn't you hear it? Well, you know I'm a sound sleeper, dear. I suppose it's my imagination. Jean, lock your door tonight. I always do. Good night, dear. Good night.
couldn't sleep that night. Then when it seemed she'd closed her eyes only a single moment, for my stepfather, but there was no longer anything even a doctor could do. Are you sure of the whistle and the metallic sound? Well, at the time, I, I was certain I heard it. But the, there was a storm and my own terror. Could a thief have... No, the only entrance to any of the bedrooms is the hallway door. Stout oak, Mr. Holmes, three inches thick. Perhaps the windows. The shutters are framed with iron bars. They were closed and locked. And the walls? The walls are solid masonry. Flooring without a break. The room was a sealed box then? Yes. Mm. And the inquest? They found nothing. There were no marks of violence on her. The coroner called it fear and nervous shock. But Mr. Holmes, I know now that it was murder. Why now, two years after? Well, a, a few days ago, some repairs were started and... The wall of my bedroom had to be pierced, so I moved into my sister's room. Last night, I heard the same clear whistle I heard the night my sister died. Miss Turner, the speckled band, have you any idea what your sister could have meant? Well, I... I told you the gypsies. Perhaps it was the spotted handkerchief they wear around their heads. Has there been any change in your personal life? I want to know whatever it is, be it so trivial as a new dressmaker or a new coachman. It isn't as trivial as that. My stepfather has given his permission, and this spring I'm to marry a very dear friend of mine, a Mr. John Armitage. Could you perhaps give me some information about him? Well, I... I... He's the man who was engaged to my sister before her death. For a long time, we denied our feelings, even to ourselves, but then... If she knew, I think my sister would want it so. If I were to come to your home, Miss Turner, would it be possible for me to see those rooms without anyone knowing? Why, yes. Uh, my stepfather left the house quite early. He said he'd be gone all day. Splendid. Then you can expect to see us early in the afternoon. Goodbye, Mr. Holmes. Goodbye. Thank you very much. I leave here feeling differently than when I came. I only hope I may justify that faith, my dear Watson. Walls, doors and window, impossible. A stepfather who loses part of an inheritance if the daughter marries. A young man, formerly engaged to the dead girl. Whistles, metallic sounds, and those strange words of her sister, the speckled band. But how do the gypsies come into this? I can't imagine. Mm, I'm afraid I see many objections for omitting them. So do I, my dear Watson, so do I. That's why we're going down there this afternoon, if you'd like to join me. Oh, yes, I always say two heads are better than one. Which one of you is Holmes? My name, sir. I am Dr. Rylott. Indeed. So now we have two doctors in the house. This is Dr. Watson. 
What did she want? Who? I know my stepdaughter was here. Since it's obvious you're determined to deduce matters for yourself, what need have you for asking a detective? I saw her leave here. What has she been saying to you? That, sir, unless you are a crystal gazer, you shall never know. And now leave my quarters. Very well, I shall. But I give you final warning to stay out of my affairs. And if you are tempted to forget, let that be a reminder to you. I fear I am now liable to forget. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, extraordinary fellow. He just spent it. Oh. How on earth did you do that? I'm glad you were able to get here this early. It will give us some time before my stepfather returns. Unfortunately, we had the pleasure of meeting him a few minutes after you left. Uh, he'd followed you. Well, what will happen? Well, uh, we're here now, Miss Stoner. <laughs> However, as we don't know how much time we have before he returns, we'd better make the most of it. Well, uh, what would you like to see first? Your own room. The one you slept in till recently. Right this way. <laughs> <laughs> You about the strange animals he keeps. Seeing's believing, Miss Stoner. <laughs> Is that the sole work being done here? Nothing else in the whole house. Mm. Watson? Ah, oh, thanks. Was any reason given for this? Uh, uh, slight decay, Dr. Rowlett explained. Yet other sections of the house in danger of collapse have not been touched. I, uh... Miss Turner, that wall would not be in need of repair for another hundred years, if then. Then... Then you feel this was a trick to get me to sleep in the room where my... May I see the room you now occupy? Yes. Same shutters as when. Yes, they were always there. Yeah. Our gypsies would have to be elves. What does that bell rope communicate with? I've never used it. To the housekeeper's room, I presume. Miss Turner. This bell rope is not three years old. I believe it was placed here shortly before your sister's death. Look, Watson. Why, I... I've just noticed it's... It's only fastened to the hook above the ventilator. Correct, Watson. It's a dummy. Where does that ventilator lead to? Uh, to my stepfather's bedroom, I think. It looks quite new. I believe it was placed there about the same time as the bell rope. Bell ropes that don't ring. Ventilators that do not ventilate. With your permission, Miss Stoner, I should like to see your stepfather's bedroom. Oh, but he always keeps it locked. An admirable precaution. But if the housekeeper should see me... You stay here until we're ready. Come, Watson.
I feel quite ashamed to take advantage of so old a lock. What are you doing? I demand to know what you're doing. Busying ourselves in a matter which does not concern you, Mr. Armitage. Who are you? Friends of Miss Stoner. Working in her best interest, that is all I can tell you. That's not sufficient for me. John! Helen, who are these men? And what are they up to? The young lady is not at liberty to inform you, sir. Uh, John, uh, please trust me until... What are you doing back? You told me you'd be gone at least a week. I felt there was something wrong here and cancelled my trip. Uh, uh, please go now. I'll go. You can reach me at the inn. I'll be there until tomorrow. But no longer. It's tonight we must think of, Miss Stoner. Not tomorrow. Miss Stoner, that safe. Have you ever seen it open? Uh, just once. It was full of papers. Not a cat? That's for the cheetah he keeps, which, after all, is just a big cat. Yes, but hardly likely to be satisfied with a saucer of this dimension. Well, how about that? Ideal for a cheetah, I'd say. Well, uh, except for the loop at the end. Except for the loop at the end. Miss Turner, I must warn you. It is absolutely essential that you follow my advice in every respect. Then, then, you know the cause of my sister's death? It is impossible to say without further proof. For one of the few times in my life, I find the facts and my instinct completely at odds. I would like to gamble on my instinct. I should too. Good. There is a lamp in your bedroom similar to that one. This evening, you will wait until you hear your stepfather retire. You will then open the shutter to your window, undo the hasp, and place the lamp on the sill. Following that, you will spend the rest of the night in your own room, the room that is being repaired. The rest, you will leave to me. What is that uh, rest, Mr. Holmes? I shall spend the night in the room where your sister died. Oh, how about me? There is a distinct element of danger. Huh, sounds all the more inviting. Ah, I was hoping you'd say that. Storm coming up. A night like the one my sister died. You know, on many an occasion, I've imagined and wished myself Sherlock Holmes. In his world, a fact was a fact. Not a balloon made of the fragile tissue of hearsay, blown up by the winds of rumor. But I must say that this is one night when I'm glad I'm in the present. I'm not standing outside that house waiting for this. And possibly death in whatever terrible and incalculable form it might come. Well, I suppose this is about as close as I can get to the bell rope. The bell rope? Well, if that's what you're interested in, why not just move the bed? Try it. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's it. I suggest that you abandon the attempt. Why? Must be fastened to the floor. Precisely. So as to be directly under the bell rope and the ventilator. But that opening so small, no human being could get through. Correct. Holmes, I suspect we're just in time to prevent some horrible and subtle crime. Correct again, my dear Watson. Pray turn down the lamp. And now, we shall wait for our visitor in whatever form he may come.
Yes, Mr. Armitage? I heard a noise. I was frightened for Helen. I thought you were at the inn. I was worried about her. You worry a great deal, Mr. Armitage. Do it at the inn. Miss Stoner is my concern. Mine too, sir. We'll see if it is. To the police. Splendid. If you persist in annoying us, we shall undoubtedly have need of the police to attend to you. We couldn't let him go to the police. Splendid, my dear Watson. Done with dispatch. I shall tie him up and assign you the task of guarding him. My eyes will be otherwise employed. Must have died within ten seconds of being bitten. He's dead. The best solution, Miss Turner. Otherwise, he would have killed you. Helen, are you all right? Yes, she's all right. No thanks to you. Where have you been? No one was going to keep me tied up with Helen in danger. I let him escape. Thought it better not to have anyone tied up with that serpent coming into the room. Tell me, darling, what happened? That you shall know all in good time. But for the present, I suggest that you pour us all a glass of soothing spirits. Dr. Watson and I will join you shortly. What did happen, Holmes? Quite simple, Watson. Quite simple now. But it wasn't then. The ventilator? The bell rope and the repairs to the other room set me on the track. However, I didn't know that the snake was kept in there and handled with that loop on the end of the whip. Nor that Dr. Roylott needed some means of recalling the snake once it had crept through the ventilator. He used the milk for that, the milk and the whistle, which signaled the animal when it was time for it to be fed. Must have been a clever man to think of using a snake whose bite could not be detected. And he must have been a patient one to train it to respond to the whistle. Yeah, but not so clever or patient as you, my dear Holmes. Us, Watson. Huh? Oh, oh well, if, <laughs> if you say so, yeah. <laughs> Why does this animal always pick on me? Elementary, my dear Watson. Elementary. It's romance. <laughs> Romantic. <laughs> well, it had me fooled. I'd forgotten that the gypsies had no more to do with it than the meddlesome young man so intent on becoming a hero. However, I suppose that's why I'm a bookshop man and not a great detective. I just like to read about such things. See you again next week? I hope so. For I'll have an amusing story for you about a pair of bobby soxers and the... the swoon king. By the way, these bobby soxers lived way back in 1900. If you're under the impression that there weren't any then, ask Grandma. Mm -hmm.